She won Most Talkative in high school, and she has been running her mouth ever since. Welcome to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast with your host, Lisa Fisher. Okay, it's my favorite topic. It's intermittent fasting because of the lives that are changed by it. And Erica, you have a fabulous story. And let me tell you how we got even connected. You are in Arkansas. I'm in Arkansas. And there are more than two people in Arkansas, obviously, (laughs) that have done intermittent fasting. But one of my friends here who's a TV anchor said, have you heard about the girl in Northwest Arkansas in Fort Smith? Erica, she's lost blankety blank pounds. You're going to tell us all that. And she said she was on some big time podcast recently. And I said, well, I've got to get her on my big time podcast. So tell me your amazing story. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me, Lisa. I'm excited to be here. I apologize that I you know, only woke up an hour ago. I'm a mom with young you, kids. So <laughs> you look wonderful <laughs> early in the morning for me. Um, right. But yeah, I'm so excited to, to chat with you about my journey. Yeah, from my heaviest point which was when I was 41 and a half weeks pregnant with my second son back two and a half years ago. I weighed almost 250 pounds. And this morning when I stepped on the scale, I was at 141 pounds and change. And 60 of those pounds have come from intermittent fasting in the last eight months or so. So yeah, it's been a drastic change, both um, mentally, physically, emotionally, in any way you can imagine, my life has been changed through this weight loss, and it's been quite the journey. <laughs> okay, so how did you first hear about intermittent fasting? Sure. So obviously, you mentioned that um, we are both in Arkansas. I work as a TV news anchor, and back about almost two years ago now, I decided that I needed some support. I had had my son about nine months earlier. I was looking to kind of get back on track with my health, but I was 225 pounds. Um, We were in the process of moving 70 miles. Moving is always a stressful time too. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just need some support. So I didn't have it in my life. So I decided to form it. And I formed a Facebook group that I called Erica's Essential Encouragement. And I invited viewers to come join it. And at the time, it was really just the selfish notion of, I need to create what is not out there for me whether it's five people, 50 people, 500 people. Um, And at this point, we're at pushing 8,000 members, which is incredible. Awesome. But in the early stages of that group, I was just doing, for the first couple of months, I did some calorie restriction. I started watching my portions, um, exercising a little bit more. And I lost about 20 pounds in two months in that group. And people that were joining the group were sharing their own weight loss journeys as well. And one of the women in that group started talking about IF, intermittent fasting, and I had never heard of it. And this was in, what would that be? Late summer, early fall of 2019. So I started to look into it a little bit, ask her some questions. Other people in the group chimed in as well, but it felt like it was still kind of an unknown. And I decided to give it a try after finding some more research and information and you know, knowing that there was a bigger community out there that I just hadn't been aware of. And so I originally started IF, I believe, at the very end of 2019, like maybe right after Thanksgiving, but it was the holidays, <laughs> which is obviously a tough time to try to start any journey. Um, so I, I, I consider myself an IF dabbler in the beginning. I started with 16.8 and then reinvigorated my journey on January 1st, because who doesn't ever start a weight loss journey on right. January 1st? And so that was January 1st, 2020. And, you know, I think I did lose. I look back at my records recently. I think I lost five or six pounds in that first month and doing 16-8, that was was okay. And then, you know, a couple months in, the pandemic happened and our worlds were turned upside down. And so I honestly credit IF at that point with helping me just maintain. I didn't lose a bunch of weight from, say, March of 2020 to September, but I also didn't gain. And as I'm sure many people who are listening probably also did, I was eating everything. I was drinking everything. You know, this was, you didn't know what was going to happen next. And it has always been a comfort for me. And I definitely did that in the early days of the pandemic. And I think as we were getting into the summer of 2020, it kind of hit me. And I said, well, this isn't going away anytime soon. And if I don't take this negative situation and make it something positive for myself, it's going to get the best of me. And I can't let that be the case. I can't be five years down the road looking back on 2020 and saying, this happened 
or, you know, this is what happened with your life and it took a negative turn. I wanted to say this is the fork in the road and I am going to make a choice to veer off one way or another. And so September 1st, 2020, I really dug in hard with intermittent fasting. Um, clean fasting is has always been um, something that I have prescribed to. And so from the beginning. Sure. So look, just so people know, our yeah. listeners know, clean fasting is a term we use in the intermittent fasting world of um, during the fasting period. And when Erica says 16, eight, that means she was fasting for 16 hours. She was eating for eight hours during her 16 hours. She only had water, black tea or unsweetened tea, no flavors, no sugars, no lemon, no lime, no nothing. Because as we know, anything incites insulin and insulin then ushers glucose to the cells and then then you get hungry. So, which is really a paradox compared compared to the teaching we've had all these years. We thought it would help us those things. So you did clean fasting, but how did you know about it? Like you were equipped with the girl in your Erica's Essential Encouragement group mm -hmm. on Facebook. Did she then introduce you to the materials that we all subscribe to, Jen Stevens, Dr. Yes. Fung, et cetera? Okay. Yes, yeah. She pointed me in that direction. Um, Jen was my introduction really into kind of the science behind intermittent fasting. Right. Obviously, she has some books, um, has some podcasts, and, and her groups on Facebook as well. So that's where I kind of dug in and just right. kind of grew naturally. You know, I didn't want to dump on myself every piece of data on day one. So I started intermittent fasting even before I knew all of the health benefits. And then over time, I mean, I remember that first month I was out there walking every single day and listening to the podcast and just kind of, right. you know, taking away a nugget each day. And that's really made a difference for me. But I think it's also helped because now I feel like I understand the science behind it. And it's not just, well, is this going to work or how does it work? I'm just going to, you know, have blind faith. No, I, I get what's happening inside my body. And so then I can use that information when I hit um, a roadblock or there's a day where I'm not as happy with either the scale or this or that. I can say, wait, remind yourself X, Y, and Z is happening inside your body right now. So you are 200... 50, how many pounds were you when you were about to deliver your third baby? A second to, baby um, in September of 2018, baby. I weighed at the hospital 249.6 pounds. Well, why did you get on the scale? Uh, believe me, I asked the same question, um, but they were preparing Sheesh. me for a C-section and I think oh, it was just and part anesthesia. of the- Anesthesia. Yeah, yeah. Anesthesia, sure, so, sure, sure. And I know that I, I obviously like, had a baby inside me who was 10 pounds right, overdue, right. but- or 10 days right. overdue, but still, I yeah, mean. Right, right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so you, you were there at a, a two and a half almost, you know, 200. I mean, it's a lot of weight. It's yeah. a lot of weight on right. anybody. What what size, how tall are you? I'm 5'4". Okay, 5'4". Oh, that is, that was a lot of weight on your little, because you're so yeah. slim now. I'm looking at your well, face and your neck and everything. You're so slim. So what was your normal fighting weight on TV? Because those of us who have been on TV know that TV really does add some weight it, I, that was the first thing people always said to me when they'd meet me, they'd go, well, you're not as big as you are in person, you yeah. know, that you are on camera. And I'd go, thanks. I didn't yeah. know if that was a compliment or not. <laughs> it, so what's your fight? What was your fighting weight on TV that you wanted to be in your head? Well, see, that's also a struggle for me because my weight has yo-yoed over the years up and down. 10 years ago when I was um, in TV early on in the early years in my first station, I went from anywhere from almost 190 pounds down to um, 145 pounds. Um, then okay. I skyrocketed back up. And after my first son, I was in like the 210 range and I anchored at 210 pounds for years um, between 2015 and 2018. Got down to in the 180s, but you know, it all, it kind of went back and forth, but I was never the size to, you know, quintessential TV anchor that, you know, right. many people might think is what you're expecting when you, when you watch TV news. Do you know how many times, how many people I know from all the newsrooms I've been in where I don't know if this is done anymore because <laughs> it's the news director that pulls you to the side and says, look, you're going to have to lose a few pounds. Uh, that happened at my first I, job. Yeah, it did. And that was pre kids and, that happened at my first job. Yeah, I was wow. in the one eighties and they said that to me oh, and they America. actually, one of my um, years at that station, they actually sent me to a weight loss program and uh, and an Stop exercise it. program. And they're like, let's cover this Stop. for the news and you can do it. <laughs> how insulting. I mean, just how insulting, like you didn't know what to do. Well, you didn't know what to do with your body because we were given wrong information for years. 
now that we have those of us who have been enlightened to the intermittent fasting way of just eating, stopping, and then eating again tomorrow, you know, yeah. once you understand the science, but oh my gosh, how hurtful that was for that young girl. Yeah. And I mean, I was in my early twenties at the time. And I actually think back now, because I distinctly remember that it was like an eight or 10 week program. And this was in like 2011 and it was an exercise program. So you went an hour a day and they did different programs like boot camp and, you know, cardio and yoga and all that kind of stuff. And even though I was doing pretty intense exercise six days a week, I gained weight. And at the end of that program, I think I was up five or six pounds, even though my strength had gained because and they told you on the it side, was all I muscle. Was, oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But on the side, mm -hmm. I was, you know, not making healthy choices, definitely eating all day long. And, you know, thinking back on that now a decade later, it's very clear that, right, exercise can't curb what's not the choice a panacea. That you make. Exactly. No, yeah. no. And well, the more I get into this, so I'm a student at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And so I'll be a health coach. And so all we do is learn about nutrition and calories and the lies we've been told calories in calories out it does not work it scientifically doesn't work dr fung will tell you it doesn't work but also understanding insulin's role and as dr fung so famously said erica obesity is not a caloric problem it's a hormonal problem your hormones were out of whack and the hormones everyone thinks well sure i have heavy periods or i'm postmenopausal no you have a million other hormones besides that. Your little thyroid gland, which right. I treasure mine because mine doesn't work too well. So that was my first introduction to hormones was about almost 20 years ago, understanding the thyroid's role in metabolism. Obviously, sure. it is the, the, the chief indicator of metabolism, but also ghrelin, which tells you you're hungry and leptin, which tells you you're full. When you were exercising six days a week and you were eating all day, you actually were making your ghrelin worse and your leptin worse. And this is what we're learning in Institute of Integrative Nutrition is that the longer you go in caloric extremes, whether you drop your calories or you increase your exercise and your hormones haven't adjusted like yours have now, um, you're hungrier. So the biggest loser, that's why we all laugh and say there are no reunion shows of the biggest loser because that extreme caloric deprivation and extreme exercise, all it does is bite them in the butt at the end. They gain the they gain their weight back then some. I mean, they'll all tell you. I mean, t there's like one person out of a million and I, I'm not making a blanket statement. I'm just saying this is pretty much the theory. Right. And it's because we understand that when they, you can deprive yourself for a certain amount of time, which you did probably during that eight week period to show your bosses that you were trying then how discouraged were you, Erica, that you got on the scale and said, well, I'm not 180, I'm 185. Right. Yeah. I mean, I had been literally busting my butt and then it I just know. I know. wasn't reflective. And, and that's, you know, my love-hate relationship with scale has been my whole life. But, you know, especially in that time frame where it was saying, this is what you're being told you have to focus on. And then it didn't yeah. cooperate. Yeah. I am so sorry. Did you, when did you feel like you started having weight struggles? Was it uh, after you went through puberty or were you a young girl fighting your weight? No. So in childhood, I, you know, didn't really have any weight issues. It wasn't something I was, you know, fully aware of. It was probably right around puberty. A few years prior to that, I definitely, my mom has always struggled with her weight as well. I remember going to Weight Watchers meetings with her and you know, playing right. off on the side with the other kids. Right. And so it's obesity has been an issue in my family for multiple generations. Um, but my struggles definitely came as I entered puberty and then started gaining weight and, you know, got chubby while uh, all my other friends were still, you know, pretty real thin. And so I, at the time, had, you know, decided to make some changes to try to address that. And that actually spiraled me down a couple of year um, stretch with an eating disorder but I was able to recover from that and get out of that, but then go the other way. So I have fought everywhere from that's anorexia amazing. to morbid obesity and everything in between. Yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. Um, so we often say with intermittent fasting that there are a few groups of people who shouldn't do it. Pregnant women, obviously nursing right. women. Um, 
And then also we say women who or men and women who have battled eating disorders. How were you able to overcome that anorexia type thinking and get into intermittent fasting and not starve yourself? Sure. Because we are not starving ourselves by right. intermittent fasting. You know, and I think that's the biggest thing is I eat a lot of food. I mean, every day I eat <laughs> and I eat a lot of food. It's just in a that's much awesome. shorter window. And so, right. you know, if that's the question is, is intermittent fasting just not eating? For me, it is anything but not eating. I enjoy, I you know, mm. way more food than I probably ate before quantity wise. And then, you know, I still let myself enjoy things like uh, pizza, tacos. Um, I had some nachos last night. I had some cake. I have um, scaled back since I kind of really honed in on September 1st and have made choices to eliminate um, added sugars for a majority of the time. But I do allow myself special kind of treat days. And on those days, I eat full sugar. Um, But yeah, I think that is the difference because I know that when I was battling that eating disorder, I just wasn't eating. And I was counting every single calorie. Mm. And exercising beyond where I needed well, to you're be. You're a prisoner. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's prison. And it's this prison. is freedom. This is freedom. 100%. Mm-hmm. I say it all the time. Yes. I mean, it's, I so, this is... it's such a relief. Really, it's such a relief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to wake up and not wonder, oh my gosh, what's my next meal? What am I going to eat so I can eat it the next time? And I don't think about food until it's time to think about food, yeah. until it's time to eat. I I drink, I've got my Topo Chico right nice. now. I drink my, well, I'm not a coffee drinker. Do you drink coffee? No, I don't, I don't drink coffee either. So you were mentioning the coffee, yeah. the tea or the water. I drink yeah. probably 80 to 90% sparkling water. I have a soda stream yeah, machine, so I make myself. Yeah. And then I drink flat water when I'm exercising because I don't like the bubbles when I'm exercising. But other than yeah. that, I drink sparkling water and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so when I started, not that this is about me, but just as a broadcaster, you can understand. Yeah. Um, I was doing a morning show on the radio, so I got up at 3.45 or 4, and everybody would drink coffee and stuff, and so I always I always came in. Well, actually then, because I thought I was doing myself good, I would drink um, water with stevia flavored. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, I can't remember. Me, me, what was it? Mio. Oh, Mio. Yeah. Yeah. The little uh, liquid I, droplets. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was doing a good thing because that had zero calories. Right. That, that's when I thought that meant something. Right. And so, but I would go there and drink that at the radio station all morning and I was hungry the whole time. And I went to the radio station. I would leave here at my house. Um, my kids were home now, empty nester, woot woot, the most <laughs> wonderful time of my life. Um, but my, my kids were home. So I would um, do like three egg omelet with avocado and salsa that I made because everything was high in fat. Mm-hmm low in carbs, doesn't matter. I would fry bacon. I'd leave it for my son who played football, you know? So I did all the things that I was told to do. And then I would eat at 4 a.m. And then I would wait until 9 a.m. to eat instead of every three hours. I had to make it. And I was so hungry every morning at 9 a.m. Then I ate at noon, three and six. That I was sounds hungry. exhausting, doesn't it? <laughs> it was exhausting because yeah. you had a plan for it too. Yeah. I would, if I went someplace, I would have to take a kind bar with me because what if I got hungry? Mm-hmm. And now, isn't it wonderful that hunger is not an emergency? No. I, I love that phrase. I mean, really, it's so true and it resonates with me every single day. And it is kind of freeing, right? We used that word before. It's totally. so freeing. And it was funny because I was talking with a colleague the other day and I just said, you know, I'm doing a 23 hour fast today. And and he said to me, oh my gosh, I would be basically, I'd just be such a bear if I had to go that long. I'd be hangry. I would be lightheaded. And I said, actually, you won't be, you wouldn't be, Mm -hmm. you know, you have to push through the first few weeks. The first few weeks can definitely be a challenge as your body is adjusting and adapting and, you know, depleting its liver glycogen and, and switching over to fat burning. But once you get through that, it gets easier and every day quote unquote diet I have ever done in the past is, you know, probably easy or easier in the beginning and gets harder with time. And this is the reverse, right? It is that's I'm right. eight months in and it's easier now than it was in the first month, you know? That's that's a great way to put that. Okay, let's talk about um so w- when you started really in a concerted effort in September. Yeah. When do you think you you got to the point where you'd burn through those glycogen stores and it you didn't dread the days. You were kind of looking forward to it going, I can do this. Sure. How so long I, did it take you? I would say probably the first couple of weeks. Um, I don't yeah. use an app to track, but I do have a running note on my iPhone. And so each yeah. day I write down the day, I write down 
what I eat, but I don't track like calories or carbs or anything. I just, it's just a list of what I ate. Um, I write down my eating window, how many steps I take, and then some notes. And I did go back and look at those notes months later. And I noticed in the first couple of weeks, I did have notes about like having some headaches and stuff and a little bit of insomnia at the beginning, but that was gone by about two weeks in. And at the point, because I had started IF dabbling earlier in 2020, in September, I was at about 18.6, and then I dropped to 24 within a few weeks. So by mid-September, those headaches and insomnia were pretty much gone, and I was all the way down to 24 already. Yeah, yeah. Is that your sweet spot, do you think? Yes, I love 24. Of yeah. yeah, me um, too. Most weekends, I will. It's interesting because, you know, I hear some people say that, like, they'll have a protocol that they do throughout the week, and then they kind of switch it up on the weekends and maybe go a little bit more lax on the weekends. And for me, it's the opposite. I tend to do 24, which is obviously 20 hours fasting and a four hour eating window during the week because it really works with my work schedule. I eat my windows between three and 7 p.m. It allows me to have kind of a little snack at work in between newscasts. And then I come home, I'm at a dinner break and eat dinner and then I'm done. Um, But during the weekend, because I don't have work, I can be a little bit more flexible. So on Saturdays, I tend to eat a little bit earlier, maybe... 1.30 1.30 or 2.30, but maybe have that be right, right? <laughs> I know. So only 18 hours at that point. Um, but it's a, you know, maybe that's my meal for the day. And then I might go from that 24 hours until Sunday afternoon. So most days or most weeks from Saturday to Sunday, I end up tossing a 24 hour fast in there and then doing kind of just one meal a day situation on those days instead of eating multiple times. What is your work, your uh, shift hours at the TV station? Yeah, I work 1.30 to 10.30. 10.30. Yep, and then yeah, I have a yeah. dinner break um, after our 6 o'clock newscast. So I'm 6.45 to 7.45 is that like break time. And so I'm able to go home and eat dinner in that time. So does your husband do the cooking for you and yeah. you just come home and grab it? Oh my okay. goodness, yes. He's a stay-at-home dad and amazing with our two boys. And so that has obviously been so helpful for me in this is that when I come home, he has taken the time already to prepare dinner and I'm able to just eat it there at the end of my window and not have to spend some of my window time preparing food. Yeah. Good, 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 good. That's a real good trade-off in a relationship because it is um, almost shift workers on some of us. Like when I was getting up at 4 a.m., my doc, my nurse practitioner would say, we have to treat your body, but like shift work, she Mm -hmm. said, which we do with a lot of media people because they are, the, the hours can be crazy. Right. And so what you've done though is so when you so when I open my window, let's say three to set two to six sometimes is my favorite, but mine really does flip flop a lot. Girl, once I open my window though, I get really hungry. I'm kind of hungry on the front end. So yeah. when you're there, do you do the five and six and ten? I do four, five, oh. six, ten. Oh girl. Yeah. <laughs> Man. I hope they pay you. Oh yeah. I'm okay. Grateful. So when you do, so when you open your uh, window, do you do a little snack? Are you real hungry then? Or, or do you just get so busy? The thing is make staying busy. You forget you're hungry. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So I typically will start that window at around the three o'clock time frame, but it, you know, flexes and depends on what's going sure. on in the newsroom. Um, but I have spent most days. I open my window with a smoothie that we will make at home and I bring with me. And so the convenience of that is that I'm able to just drink it while I'm sitting there continuing to work. Good. And that doesn't mean that I also don't have um, some other snack, like I'll bring with um, some fresh veggies that I dip in like ranch or natural peanut butter, um, sometimes some cheese and crackers, but it's always kind of that like smaller finger food type thing and fresh and, you know, nothing cooked or hot or anything. But the smoothie is my go-to pretty much every time I break my fast. Though recently I got into making chia pudding. Have you ever made chia pudding? No, tell me about it. Gosh, it's so good. So I had seen someone chatting about chia seeds and I like the texture of them, but I never thought to like buy them at the grocery store and throw them into my stuff at home. So I bought some, stick them in my smoothie. They're delicious in there as well, but they're hard little crunchy seeds that when put in liquid, they kind of swell up and they get a little jelly, almost like a tapioca. And so you take just a couple tablespoons of chia seeds and a half a cup of milk. I use unsweetened vanilla almond milk, stir them together, break out the clumps and stick it in the fridge overnight. And it turns into like a tapioca texture, but it's high in protein, low in fat, low in carbs. 
Um, and then you can top it with whatever you want. And so- And then it gets in your teeth. Well, no, I, the gel does okay. keep it from not getting in your teeth too much. Okay. I think I found like one at one point, but it's not too bad. But the okay. texture is really interesting sure. and it's a nice vessel for putting whatever toppings on it you want. But most of the time now, I do, do my you do you still have diet brain? Because you're mentioning some things and it may be you truly want it. Do you still, sometimes our diet brains make us gravitate toward things that sound more righteous, like, and I'm not saying you are, but I have to watch myself that the unsweetened vanilla almond milk, sure. do you choose that because you feel like that that is healthier for you or you're maybe you're dairy intolerant? Or do you think in your brain still that uh, milk is fattening? Gotcha. Yeah, so personally, I just don't, like milk. I am not dairy intolerant. Gotcha. I am vegetarian, but I'm not vegan. I love cheese and ice cream and all those things. Um, but I'm Hallelujah. not a huge uh, right milk there. fan, especially cow's milk. And so almond milk has just been something over the years okay, that good. I've gravitated toward. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying. And it is interesting. Yeah. I feel like my tastes have started to change. And, you know, I try to make healthy choices. But then again, I will have um, a biscuit crust breakfast pizza for dinner, or I'll have four loaded tacos, or I will have, you know, nachos right, loaded good, with cheese and beans good, and all that stuff. Good. So, yeah. What do you do then for meats on your che on your pizza and tacos? Just cheeses? No. Um, protein, I, rather? Yeah, I have, um, I definitely will eat the different um, meatless protein options that are out there. There's lots of different brands now that it's way better as a vegetarian now than it was 21 years ago when I started. I can promise you that. <laughs> wow. Um, and then also just things like beans um, or legumes, peanut butter, tofu I love. Um, so there's lots of different options out there for added protein eggs. So I will make sure that I have protein in some form for sure. Right. So because as a student at IIN, we've been going over. So it's the vegans that are ones that are low in like B vitamins and iron and other things, but vegetarians probably get that because cheese, cheese will provide probably some things, I guess. Do you feel like you have, you're low on some nutrients with this kind of eating? I mean, I've been a vegetarian for 21 years. I, I, and, and then with IF, I mean, I feel the best I've ever felt in my life. I don't know. Right. I guess that's something right. that I'd be curious to have my doctor look know. at with blood work. But mm -hmm. You would know. Oh, no? This okay. is what I'm learning too. Okay. You, we know your body tells you what is best for you and you found it. Gotcha. And that's why we always say at IIN, it's, and Jen Stevens says this, you hear a lot of people say bio-individuality, meaning what works for you may not work for me, but it, it may work for somebody else. Yeah. And you have found your sweet spot yeah. that a, a vegetarian who fasts for 20 hours a day has four hour eating window, you know, and has and lots of double carb. crust. <laughs> <laughs> and let's, oh, I'm pro carb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's then that's not diet mentality then. If you're eating carbs. Oh yeah, it's Lots of carbs. It's the person who is pursuing this way of eating and still says, now, and again, someone may be doing it because they feel their best uh, with a keto diet. Sure. I, I don't, I, I mean, I love some fat, but I, li I like it all. I like yeah. everything that God provides to put, be, to shove in my mouth. So with that, you just have to think, is this diet mentality? Because diet mentality ruined us. And I know this too, because I do these intermittent fasting Zoom calls and I coach people and we do groups and they always, when they like, so the first week we kind of talk about what intermittent fasting is. The next week they'll come back and report and they'll say, well, I only had two carbs at lunch mm. and I did a low fat yogurt. And I said, don't eat the highest fat yogurt you can find yeah. and eat all the carbs and don't drink a diet soda. In fact, don't drink sodas. Just start, start eliminating them. You know, one baby steps, baby steps. But again, it's that diet mentality that if you ever turn on any type of media, it tells us to get the zero fat yogurt. That's the worst thing for you because right. then they have to add sugar. So have you noticed then that you're starting, this is what I too have noticed that my appetite, though I've always been a pretty healthy eater, loved all the things, but I am really gravitating toward these things that are healthier mm -hmm. because that's what my body craves. Yeah. So do you eat fish then? I don't, I, I never really preferred fish just even prior like to being yeah. a vegetarian. Yeah, so I just don't do fish. Um, but yeah, I feel that same way in terms of just the, preferences change. I mean, even just in the last couple of weeks, I think maybe because seasons are changing too. Um, yeah. I said to my husband, I said, I'm really craving some like mixed greens. And we 
got a big old container yes. from the grocery store and yes. we've been having more salads recently. And that Me was too. just in the last couple of weeks. Prior to yeah. that, there would be dinners where I had had a, veggies as my snack at work. And so my dinner had, you know, maybe a few green onions and jalapenos sprinkled on top, but it was not very veggie focused. And then as of late, yeah. I've been having some more salads, but I think that's just because that's what my body was craving. And I'm listening to that yeah. as opposed to the mindset saying you have to do this because this is what you're told is quote unquote healthy. Does that make sense? Right, right, right. No, I, I eat salads as nourishment because the leafy greens are so valuable for your yeah. brain health for so many things. So I, but not iceberg lettuce. Like I don't waste my oh, time gotcha. on iceberg lettuce. <laughs> I, I like arugula yeah. and the, any of the bitter greens, any of them, you mix them together, or yeah. I boil eggs. I mean, mine are topped and really, really full. Yeah. Okay. So in September, what was your weight? Since you know, you have it all on your phone, yes, I'm sure. I do. What was your weight in September? Yeah. So September 1st, 2020, I weighed in at 201.1. Wow. And you were 141 this morning yeah. and this is nine months later. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Yeah. So w when did it, I mean, not many people have this type of success. So I don't want someone listening to think, well, I've done intermittent fasting for three weeks and I haven't lost this amount of weight or whatever, even nine months sometimes they'll yeah. say. What, what do you think it is about you that just, it, it was your mindset, it clicked. So I think in that first month, especially, I call it kind of my trifecta. I had the tool of intermittent fasting that I was able to really hone in on and, you know, pare down to that 24 sweet spot that has worked for me. I also committed that month to doing 30 days of the no added sugar. And so for me, that Good. meant Good. just not added sugar. I still had fruit every single day in that smoothie, um, but it was not stuffed with added junk. Mostly it was really to pare down on the junk and treats that I was eating. But I yeah. took it a step further with other things. Like I don't have sweetened yogurt. I don't have sweetened almond milk. I've cut out those places. Good. Um, and no diet sodas or sodas of any kind. I don't drink soda at Good. all. The sparkling water Good. has been my kind of substitute yeah. for that. And then I also walk daily. And people have asked me, especially interestingly, I feel like in the last couple of months, they have been even more curious about my exercise regime. And I don't know if it's now that my body has gotten to a slimmer point that, you know, you can see the changes in like each part of my body, like my arms and my legs and my waist. Um, but I have done nothing more than walk daily. I walk a lot, but I do not. I haven't lifted weights. I don't go do CrossFit. I don't, you know, run hardcore. I've been walking. And so those three things together. And I really feel like that no added sugar was just that extra um, little push on the acceleration for me in that first month. And that first month in September of 2020, I lost 15 pounds in 30 days. And I wow. was shocked, you know, because I know I had been listening to all the stuff about IF. I know that it's not a wow. crash diet. It's not a quick fix. Yeah, no. So when that happened, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, something, these things are, are meshing together and gelling together here and really working for me instead of against me finally, you know? Well, do you know what else I'm seeing? So in 2011, you did that boot camp type thing that mm -hmm. the TV station sent you off. And in eight weeks, you gained five pounds, mm -hmm. right? Go to 2020, where all you did was walk. You were listening to your body, Erica. Your body, so our bodies produce cortisol in times of stress. You are stressed knowing I have to lose the weight. I'm on TV. They're breathing down my neck. I'm doing this for a, a, a segment you produced cortisol that probably gave you a little fat around your abdomen, made you puffy in the morning, you know, all the things that cortisol does. It's because of the stress we put our bodies under. Uh, again, this is a crash course for everybody. You don't have to do IIN now because I'm telling you all the secrets. <laughs> but the other thing is gentle is better. Yeah. And as women age, I know you're still a young girl, but we do need to do things. That's why... I just get a yoga mat sometimes. I do some stretching. Today, I did do about a 30-minute walk, listen to my smutty podcast that I listen to. Oh, there's a new one. Oh. <laughs> in, in God We Lust, it's about Jerry Falwell Jr. Oh, my goodness. And oh, his, that sounds And his wife. Interesting. And the menage a trois. Yeah. It is the craziest thing. So that's what, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't walk fast. I was, <laughs> my mouth is gaped open. But I'm just saying, I'm, I'm noticing my body is so much happier with me when I'm not out there trying to pound the pavement, pound the pavement, uh, but lifting weights is fine, 
but there's a point where you just crossed over into overdoing it. Right. But our society says better, faster, more, louder, and and you're going to improve. No, you just showed us right there. And tw- 10 years ago, you tried it. And now you're doing it a different way and your body has released 60 pounds just in this amount of time. Right. And this is also post kids, right? I mean, 20, 10 years ago, I was in my early twenties. I hadn't had children yet. And so I mean, my body should have really been in the best shape that it could have been to be successful. And it wasn't right. Yeah. You put it under way too much stress. Do you see that now? That you were, yeah, yeah, you yeah. were, you were doing too much. I know, yeah. and I'm not pointing the finger. I've been there. Yeah. I mean, I've been there of that pressure of being on TV after I had a baby, trying to lose the weight. Oh my gosh, it's a terrible thing. And you know what? People are so much more forgiving than your news director because women at home are watching, going, "I've been there. I get it." I remember when, remember the King of Queens and um, uh, the what, the girl in that, that is J-Lo's friend, that um, she does a Scientology thing. Oh, Leah Lisa Remini. Remini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Le- Leah, Leah Remini. Leah, yeah. Yeah. She had, yeah, she had gained a lot of weight. Now, I could tell, because I also think I'm a doctor. I'm 12 <laughs> years away from a degree. I could tell by watching that her thyroid had blown out because her she was real puffy through her neck. Oh, interesting. And I could tell by the way she was swollen. And then later I saw where she said she had thyroid disease. But she was super tiny, um, started gaining weight, had a baby, and then was just puffy for a long time. And I remember her bosses kind of going, <clears throat> but women were at home going, you go, girl, because right, it takes it. a minute. Yeah. I mean, you've, my gosh, you had a human you had a human that you gave to the world. Everybody simmer down. I just hate that pressure that women feel. And I remember Kelly Clarkson being puffy after, and she's still thick. So what? She's super talented. I mean, who cares? Yeah. And uh, but just somebody to be, does. Right. Just to be judged by, you know, how you look yes. and, and plenty of things that are totally out of your control, right? We can't control right. a lot of these things. And th- yeah. But you know, Erica, people don't know it until you you have really kind of walked that path of saying, I was truly trying. You were 180 pounds, you were 40 pounds more than you are now, had never had a baby, and yet you were gaining weight doing something. Right. Hey, the world, listen, it, more is not better. Right. Less is better. Yeah. You know, and that's what you did. All you did, well, you've listened to yourself and you haven't deprived yourself a meal. Yeah. And I think that has really been... Um again, I guess that just that word of freedom, because before this, I think I was so out of touch with my body's cues and signals that right. I just couldn't hear it, you know? And now I can actually hear what my body's saying to me. Even just last night, I ate past that point of satiety, but you know what? I yeah. felt it and I knew it was happening. Yeah. And yeah. I made the conscious choice in the moment to do it. And sometimes that happens, but I could recognize it. Whereas before that feeling of going too far was just how I always felt. And I kind of just felt sluggish and just felt blah and too much. And so I, I couldn't recognize what it was, right? Now I can recognize that feeling and recognize what my body is telling me. And that has been a learning journey to get to that point. So I think to go through what I went through in these 34 years of life and my weight loss roller coaster, I feel like was kind of necessary. I'm glad that I was able to get to this point Absolutely. now and, and this not be Absolutely. 20 years down the road for me. But at the same time, I, for me personally, as my personality, I, I needed to experience those things. Um, I, I think I've even heard Jen say before, you know, to be obese, you don't know what that feels like if you've never been obese, you know, so... I know what it was like to be 250 pounds. I've never, I'm at a point now where I'm not, but I have struggled for so many years that that has shaped who I am today. When was the last time you were 141 pounds? High school? Well, I graduated high school at 132. And okay. yeah, I mean, I guess probably in early college, but First, you know, I went college, to college yeah. and I gained that freshman 15 and then some. and. Maybe I'm trying to think I did um, kind of a push of weight loss that was hard and fast in 2010, 2011. 
And I think I got into the 140s, maybe, maybe. But that For didn't last long. Yeah, it was a minute. Yeah. yeah. And then your body yeah. uh, rebounded. I, yeah. Because I've, I've always said I love the HCG diet, but it, it's not sustainable. It's not maintainable. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 And so, and that was one of those times that after the HCG diet that kept me deprived, remember deprivation causes more ghrelin. Right. And it messes up your leptin. So after the HCG diet, then you do a six week period of maintenance where you're just eating, I I guess no carbs. I had hunger unlike anything I could explain. And it was my hormones were out of whack. See, I didn't realize that. And so I wouldn't need to do HCG now because even a lot of people ask, well, could you do Weight Watchers with IF, I go, well, it's your choice. You do what you want. Sure. But just when you have a diet mentality, then there's, that's why we don't call ourselves being on a wagon. Right. We're, so last night you overate, but you weren't, you didn't fall off the wagon. No. You didn't, you weren't off the program. There is no program. Right. I mean, I so still fasted wait, 23 well, and a half hours before I had dinner last night. That's a huge well, successful hello. day of IF for me. So, hello. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, um, during all this, because uh, someone with that type of weight, did you have gestational diabetes with your kids? I did not. They tested me, obviously, with both pregnancies, yeah. and thankfully, I did yeah. not. But I, that was a so concern, have you of had course. any high glucose readings or anything with that weight? No, my numbers were Good. okay, which was obviously Good. something that I knew could be a concern with my family history. So that's something yeah. that I have kept an eye on, but even at my last doctor's appointment in the, you know, upper 200s pound range, my numbers were okay. And so I was lucky that they hadn't yet gone to the point where we're saying, okay, you're pre-diabetic, you're, you know, Good. type one diabetes or type two diabetes, but type two. Mm-hmm. It's, it was does headed that mom, direction, you know. Does your mom have type two diabetes or anybody in your family? No, I think the last I heard in talking with my dad a few years ago, I think he was technically considered pre-diabetic, which was crazy because he has not um, ever been overweight. He was a runner, um, always kept his weight in check. Oh, um, so that wow. was another interesting balance is, you know, he was dealing with that pre-diabetes, even with having really more a model of health for him than my yeah. mom. But my mom spent many, many years overweight after she had my brother and I. And then was able to, she did Weight Watchers for many years as well and has Mm -hmm, been able to take weight off and keep it off. Um, But they're both very active. They're in their late 60s, early 70s. They bike all the time. The summer of 2018, my dad biked across the United States. um, Show off. Yeah, like 69 years old. So, I mean, he's he's incredible. But Awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. But there are plenty of health concerns in my family with heart disease, stroke, diabetes. My grandfather died at 57 of a heart attack a week after being diagnosed with diabetes. So it's something Uh, that I have been very concerned about for my whole life. Great. Where did you grow up, Erica? I grew up in Northwest Indiana, uh, but my mom is from Minnesota and my dad's from Germany. But we ended up in Indiana. He was a professor. What do they think of their little girl in Arkansas? (laughs) They probably think it's another planet. (laughs) Right. No, it was interesting because I have never been in the South and I had never visited Arkansas prior to coming here for my interview. And I came and then two months later, we were living here. And how long has that been? We moved here in June of 2017. So I have been here almost four years. So were you pregnant then in Fort Smith? Yeah. So, and we actually, at the, when we were down in the River Valley, we lived over the border in Roland, Oklahoma, but I gave birth to my right. son in Fort Smith. So we moved here in uh, June of 17. I got pregnant then by that winter and then gave birth in September of 18. So then this is the thinnest your viewers have ever seen you. They have seen me at my thinnest and my heaviest. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Because we don't, since we're not looking at the scale, we're thinking about our nutrition every day. Um, you're not on a diet. What, when do you think, I mean, you don't Well, Jen Stevens said she didn't know when the scale would stop, but when she got to a z- double zero, right. <laughs> you know, there really would not much further to go. What do you think? Are you thinking of a size that you want? Cause you look great, but I don't know what you feel like in your skin. Yeah. And I think that's, and that's where up to you. my 
first goal that I set, big goal, you know, so my, I definitely did small goals along the way. When I started on yeah. September 1st at 201.1, my first goal was to get under 200, which was, you know, only 1.2 pounds, but that was the first step, <laughs> right. you know? That is awesome yeah. though. I love that. You have to take those small steps, but yes. then my bigger picture goal at first was to say, I want to get under a BMI of 25 because that puts me in that okay. normal BMI range. And I know that BMI mm-hmm. is not the end all be all and there are plenty of issues no, with but BMI. It's something. But it was exactly it's something. it was something to right. say I'm going to use this as a target point. Good. And so that weight for me was 145.6, I believe. So I'm only a few pounds less awesome. than that, but that's awesome. that happened, which is great. And then I think at this point it's really just a matter of letting my body do what it wants to do. And we'll see what happens with that. I think I'm really comfortable at the 24 mark. And uh-huh. if I continue to shed some more weight, I mean, I definitely have, you know, places on my, on my belly, on my thighs that there's still fat there. And so if my body wants to eat that up and get rid of it, great. If I don't lose another pound from today, that's okay too. And Good. what's really interesting, you mentioned sizing. So I've been doing a lot of secondhand shopping to replenish my wardrobe because I had to get rid of all of my stuff of 14, 16, 18. And, and so quickly, yeah. you're just running through yeah. these clothes. And then also have to have stuff that's on air appropriate, which is obviously something that I can't right. just wear jeans mm-hmm. and t-shirts all the time. And so I've right. been secondhand shopping and that's always a fun journey to look at sizing because right now I have stuff in my closet that's a zero, a two, a four, a six, and an eight. And they all fit my body at 141 pounds. So talk about a mind game, wow. right? Like how confusing yeah, totally. is that? I'm an eight or I'm a zero or what am I? You know, so I try not to worry about the label so much. That's much easier said than done, of course. But Right. Well, yeah, the vanity sizing yeah. you really see so in like boutiques yeah. and um, more expensive clothing, yeah. you know, because yeah. they want you to spend the money. You're like, exactly. well, it's a two. Right. I'm sure. Buy it. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You've just made such a metamorphosis for people. Have you done a side by side, like to put on your Erica's essential encouragement? In fact, I may put that page in our show notes. Sure. And so yeah, that would be great. Listening. Yeah. Can and join we would page. love to have people come. You don't have to do intermittent Good. fasting to be in the group, but plenty Good. of people have joined because they've followed my journey and they're interested in what IF is, but there's lots of people doing different things in that group. But yeah, I try to post um, updates, you know, kind of when I hit certain milestones or Good. when just something kind of triggers me. And I have that photo from September 1st, where I took a screenshot of me on TV that day. And then I keep that and kind of go back and compare um, wow! But yeah, I, I will have that, people, obviously we have people who watch every single day, but then there's also viewers that kind of come in and sample and here and there. And so I've had plenty of people reach out to me who say, you know, I hadn't watched the news in a while and I clicked back on and I thought right. they had someone else that they'd hired because you don't look the same. And I said, well, thank you. I'll take it. Right. They recognize your voice. Right. They're right. like, is that the same girl? Right. And my name on the screen, um, but my face, maybe not. Right. That is, it's just really amazing. So what size do you think you are? About a four? Yeah, I would say, I mean, probably in like real numbers, I would say a four, six, uh, depending on what That's it is. Small. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I feel, I feel great. The measurements, I, I've been tracking my measurements as well. And that's something that when I'm Good. chatting with people who are just starting out, I, you know, encourage them to not only weigh in, take before photos, but also take measurements. I didn't take my first measurements until September 20th. So about three weeks in. But since then, I've lost almost 60 inches off multiple parts of my body, (laughs) of course, all added together. But my waist has gone from 34 inches to 26 and a half. And I'm fairly certain in those first three weeks that it was larger than 34. You know, I just don't have those numbers. And that's why I tell tell people measure. Of course, you don't want to see it when you're at the beginning, but you're going to want to see it later to compare back to because I can't even fathom it. I mean. It just doesn't feel real until I pull that measuring tape out and I say, wait, this, you know, big extra gap here is where I was just six, eight months ago, you know? Well, we love to talk about the non-scale victories. We call them NSVs. And it's someone who says they no longer have psoriasis, someone else who doesn't have skin tags or a sign of uh, high insulin. Did you have any of those things that often go with obesity? Did you have skin tags um, or I, you anything know, else? No, not really skin tags. I, I guess I have like some moles and stuff and some of them yeah. are, you know, protrude a little bit, but I've heard that. And I think that's fascinating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just haven't dealt yeah, with that personally, is. but I'm just 
yeah. know, fascinated by that, by that notion. Yeah. Well, what, what are some things you feel like you have that have been eradicated or you don't have the problems anymore because, or it just may be you have, your shoes are smaller. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. What sure. are some things? Um, I mean, something as simple as my rings don't fit me anymore. I have to wear ring yeah, sizers right. or change like what yeah. finger my ring is on. Um, I had to buy smaller belts, obviously, as my waist went down. Right. I've noticed that, and my husband said this to me the other day, we have a large stand fan and I used to have it in the bathroom next to me every single day as I was getting ready because I'd get so hot. And I always joked that I, you know, had hot flashes in my 20s, even though I'm not, you know, menopausal. Mm-hmm. Now, instead of being hot all the time, I'm actually, for oh. the first time in my life, I get chilly. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? Yeah. I don't get cold and I'm cold and so my husband said, you know, well, I think it's just because you have less, literally less on you, less insulation. <laughs> yes. And you know what? That's really a sign. That's really a good sign for your body because do you notice some people when they open their window, they break out in a sweat mm-hmm. because their body's having to work so hard to digest that before until I eat, I'm cold all every morning until I eat again. And, and when I eat up. again, my thermos comes back up yeah. and I'm warming back up, but I'm cold in the mornings. And they say that's real common with people do intermittent fasting too. Plus less, you, you're not, not as much there to keep warm. Right, right. So definitely that, but there's some thermogenic effect with not eating and eating. Interesting. I didn't know that. So what's your longest fast you've ever done? Okay, so I have done one ADF attempt. I did a mealless Monday where I went from a Sunday night into a Tuesday. And you know, there are some people who do alternate daily fasting as their every protocol. other day. Right. That's right. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be me. It's hard. I, I like to eat I'm, every I'm day. Glad, it was hard. Right. I'm glad you didn't die yeah. because during it you think I'm gonna die. Right. I'm just not yeah. gonna make it. I know. Yeah. I've done maybe three times and it's See, again, I'm an empty nester now. Uh, Back before the pandemic, my husband traveled. So it was easier because then there was no food. Mm -hmm. No one was talking about food. And I'd been busy all day. I'd been doing TV production. And then it was like five o'clock, six o'clock. And I just got another one of these. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to go to bed at 930 or 10 and wake up the next day. But again, I don't have little people around me or a husband who's chewing or, you know, now that he's here and chewing again, I, right. I haven't done it. And I could, but I don't want to. Yeah, you know, it was, I mean, I, I, I just, did 40, I did 40 hours. I went 40 hours yeah, that first time. Yeah. And it was, it was interesting in that the first day, I mean, I had done 27 up to that point was my longest fast prior to doing the 40 hour, but I didn't yeah, sleep which twice. Which a long time. Yeah, which was a long yeah. time, but the 27 was okay. And that the day the 27 happened, it was just kind of necessitated by my schedule that I right. couldn't eat sure. earlier. So I went to 27. It was no big deal. But that sleeping the second night and then waking up the second day, um, I had a pretty significant headache the next morning and I was drinking lots of water. Yeah. I think I drank 180 ounces the, the, the day oh, where I, the, the, the Monday where I wasn't eating. Um, and then Tuesday, yeah. I felt like all I could think about was going to be that meal. Like, and I ate it at 11 a.m., yeah. I think was my first meal. Yeah, and that's about what meal. I've done. But mm-hmm. I just, it was to, not to say that I couldn't do it again, but for me, it wasn't necessary. It, it doesn't feel necessary. If I was stuck with IF and felt like my weight wasn't dropping the way I wanted it to, or say I was back 40 pounds ago and I was hitting a roadblock, maybe I give ADF a more serious chance, but it's not necessary for me, so I don't really want to do it. <laughs> I just heard Jen Stevens this week that we're recording this in May. And so you could look at uh, Jen Stevens' intermittent fasting stories or podcasts and see this. She interviewed a girl who's in Fayetteville. She works I listened at the to university. That episode. Yeah. And she's all about ADF. Yeah. In fact, that's how she lost her weight. And that's an alternate daily fast. So I've done it a few. Some This is what I sometimes think happens too. Let's say I've gone almost 24 hours and I, and then I'm going to open my window. Well, I get full so easily, mm-hmm. which is a weird thing that I never thought right. I would ever, because I thought there was always room for more. Yeah. And so that ends up being sometimes a light or down day for me. I don't know if it's 500 calories because I don't count. I don't want to have that diet brain. But then the next day, my body's hungrier. So I'll eat two good meals. So that's not truly, it's an update down day approach. That's another option. Sure. Some people truly do not eat for that window from Sunday night to Tuesday at noon. But then if you do that, listen to me, people, if you do that, the 
on your up day, you have to refeed or you're going to wreck your metabolism. And that's what we're trying to do. Our metabolism, it, we have upregulated our metabolism actually doing this more than any other thing we could do, which is again, the exact opposite of what we've been told all of our lives. All of our lives, we were told to eat 1200 calories a day. Well, I don't know what I eat. It doesn't matter, but I, I just try to put my fork down when it's time. Have you heard Jen Stevens say, and others have said this, that their body sighs when they've reached satiety, meaning they're finished with their, they're finished eating or they're done. And they all of a sudden go, huh. And they know they're finished eating. Have you yeah. ever noticed that? Yes, I have noticed that. I think once I, I heard it in one of the podcasts, it was kind of brought up as a concept. Yeah. And I thought, okay, let me try to pay attention for that. And when I mentioned eating past satiety yesterday, that's literally what happened. I had the sigh moment and then wow. I went back for another bite. And so in yeah. my mind, I knew that yeah. I was making a choice past that moment of satiety. Yeah. Um, but I had allowed myself a treat yesterday. It was um, some cake that my boys had gotten me for Mother's Day. And so I no, said, so you sweet. know what? I'm going to finish off this piece of cake, even though I Good. had the sigh. And so it was one of those things where you have to, it doesn't mean that you won't eat past it, but you have to be aware of it. And so to have that yeah. moment it, of recognition was so powerful. And that's what intermittent fasting has done for you. Obviously it's made you recognize mm -hmm. what Erica needs, what her fuel is, what the best exercise for her is. So you've really listened to yourself and your body. Yeah. I'm really proud of you. You have a great story. You're so encouraging. This is so encouraging. And we've always said in journalism that we are never the story, but someone needs to do a story on you. And I've already put that in for the magazine where I'm the editor at large. I've already told the real editor. I said, I've got a girl in Northwest Arkansas. I want you to do a oh, feature well, thank on. thank you. So oh my goodness. You, you'll be getting, a, that's AY Magazine, okay. AY about you. You'll be getting a call from them because they loved it. I oh, mean, well, thank you. People, people need to see that our, this really puts your health in your hands. You could have been a patient forever. Right. You could have seen doctors forever, um, but you chose to do something that, for one thing, saves you money. 100%. Think about all the, yeah, isn't that crazy right. how much food we, how much money we wasted just on eating all I the know. time, but you saved money. You've, you've taught yourself how to live within your dietary needs and means and you're thriving. Yeah. You look great. Thank your skin you. is beautiful. You. Don't you, do you feel like it's improved your skin? Yeah. Thankfully I've, uh, my skin has not been something I've had to struggle with much in my Good. life. I'm grateful for that, but I definitely feel that extra just layer of kind of, you know, people talk about like a glow and I definitely feel like I have that. Obviously for camera, yeah. I have to put on makeup that kind of mattifies to eliminate shine, but this right, is makeup free on a weekend. So. Okay. So some of these, some people are watching this on YouTube. Others are listening on the podcast. So those of you listening, you'll have to look for the YouTube where we upload it because you look great. Thank you. And so what will you eat today? We are finishing this up oh, at 11.08 yeah. on a Saturday morning. What what are you eating? Because it's the day before Mother's Day. I know. Day. So this is actually a very special day because my children and husband have traded me to a early Mother's Day gift, I guess. I'm going to go get a massage and facial later this afternoon. So prior to that, okay. I'm going to go out to a restaurant by myself and have a Good. restaurant meal out. Um, but I won't awesome. eat until about three o'clock. So I'll be at a 20 hour fast at that point. Great. And I'm going to go there and I'm going to have, it's a kind of gourmet Mexican place. So I'm going to have chips. Yep. I'm going to have salsa. I'm going to have tortillas. I'm going to have yeah, cheese. I'm going to have, have it all. Um, and probably Good. not finish it all, bring home some leftovers, which is maybe something, you know, a year ago I wouldn't have been doing but I will enjoy it all and not worry about a single calorie, a single carb. And that is my every day. That's not just because today is kind of a quote special day. That's every right. day. Good. So, yeah. That's right. And have a margarita because oh, you're not working that tonight. That sounds good. I honestly, yeah. I have not had alcohol since September 1st because I think through the pandemic, I was kind of going the other direction with alcohol. So I sure. decided to kind of curtail that. So I'll have to decide. It's not that I said I'm going to be sober forever. I just haven't. Right. But I don't know, maybe I will. It's a good idea. <laughs> you're you're very inspiring. Happy Mother's Day. Thank For you, anyone you listening, it'll be past Mother's Day. Thank you. But you're very inspiring, Erica. You Thank you're you. really you're killing it. Thank you. I appreciate it, Lisa. Thanks for listening to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe and download all the episodes and leave a review, won't you? The Lisa Fisher Said Podcast is produced by ClantonCreative.com.